Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we learned how to create a basic API with Next.js. In a typical production application though, you might have to fetch data on click of a button, submit data on click of a button, or even delete data on click of a button. In this video, let's focus on fetching data on click of a button. That is, how to make a GET request with API routes. Now for our examples, we are not going to set up a database as that would become a distraction in itself. We are going to keep it very simple and maintain the data in memory. So the data basically is lost if you restart the application, but that shouldn't matter since our focus is primarily on creating API routes. Now, to respond to a GET request, we need some data to begin with. In the project root folder, I'm going to create a new folder called data. Within the folder, I'm going to create a new file called comments.js. This file basically contains an array of comments. For example, user comments on a YouTube video. I'm going to copy paste an array of three comments. Each comment has an ID and some text. All right, now that we have the data to work with, we have two steps left to implement. For step one, we are going to create an API endpoint that serves these comments. So in the API folder, I'm going to create a new folder called comments. Within the folder, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. Since this is an API route, we export a default handler function which receives request and response as parameters. So export default function handler request response. From this function, we need to return a JSON of all the comments stored in the data folder. So res.status of 200.json and the data we are returning is comments. Now VS Code added the import statement for me, but if it didn't for you, make sure to include it. All right, if you now head to the browser, and navigate to slash API slash comments, we should see the array of comments being returned. Our API works as expected. Now for step two, let's create a page which loads this data on click of a button. In the pages folder, I'm going to create a new folder called comments. This is outside the API folder. Within the folder, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. Within this file, we create our React component. So function, comments page, and then default export it. Export default, comments page. In the JSX, we are going to add a button. So button, the text is load comments and on click of this button, let's invoke a function called fetch comments. This function will make an API request to the API route we have just created. So fetch comments is going to be an async function and we make a get request to slash API slash comments. So const response is equal to await fetch slash API slash comments. And once we have the response, we convert it into JSON. And then we need to update a state variable with this data. So at the top, import use state from react and create a new state variable. Let's call it comments. The setter function is set comments and the initial value is an empty array. Within fetch comments, 
we call set comments passing in data. And once we have the data, we can render it as a list. So curly braces, comments dot map for each comment, we're going to return a div tag where the key is comment.id and we render comment.id followed by comment.text. And that is pretty much it. Let's save the file and head to the browser. I'm going to navigate to localhost 3000 slash comments. This reflects the JSX from the component we have just defined. If I click on the load comments button, an API request is made, the data is fetched and rendered in the UI. We have implemented both the front end and the back end side by side. And if you ask me, this is really impressive. So handling a GET request in your API route is pretty simple since it is the default verb for our handler. But how do we handle a POST request? Well, let's take a look at that in the next video.